In this video, you're going to learn how to find the cross product of two vectors. And we're going to go through two examples together. So let's dive in. The first example, we're going to take u cross v. Now, what does it mean to cross two vectors? Well, what it means is, say for example, if I wanted to find uh, u cross v. Here's vector u, here's vector v. There's something called the right hand rule. You take your right hand, you put your fingers along this first vector, u, you curl them towards the second vector, in this case v, and the direction that your thumb points is the direction of the cross product, the vector that is uh, the result of that cross product. So in this case, this vector you can see is going to come right out of the page towards you. But what's interesting is it's perpendicular to vector v as well as vector u. Now if you were to change it and say we wanted to find v cross u, you would take your hand, again your right hand, put your fingers along that first vector, in this case vector v, curl them the way that they normally curl, okay, in this case towards the second vector u, and the direction that that thumb on your right hand points, in this case is pointing back behind the board, that's the direction of the cross product, okay. And notice that the vector is going to be perpendicular to those two original vectors, it's just that it's going to be going 180 degrees opposite that first vector when you change the order. So the order is really important when you're finding the cross product. Now the way that we find the cross product, we set it up very similar to when you take the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix using the method of minor. So if you're familiar with that technique, it's going to be very similar. We're going to start with this first row writing these standard uh, unit vectors i, j, and k. Remember i is like a one unit vector in the x direction, the j is a one unit vector in the y direction, k is a one unit vector in the z direction. Then you're going to take vector u, this first vector, which in this case is 3, 1, 4, vector v, which is the second vector, negative 2, positive 2, negative 3. And again, make sure the order, u comes first, v comes second. And we're going to set it up like this. We're going to be taking the determinant, so I'm going to say i minus j plus k. So what you do is you take the row and the column that go through i, so this row and column, I'm going to cover those up. The vector that I'm, I'm sorry, the matrix that I'm left with, 1, 4, 2, negative 3 is going to go right here. And we're going to take the determinant of that. Now for this middle matrix, we're going to take the column and the row that go through j, we're going to cover those up or cross those out, and the matrix that we're left with is minor matrix, 3, 4, negative 2, negative 3. And then lastly, we're going to take the column and the row that go through k and this minor matrix that we're left with, 3, 1, negative 2, and 2, we're going to take the determinant of. Now, where students sometimes go a little bit off track is, see, this is like positive, negative, positive. So this middle one, you're going to be multiplying by a negative here. Sometimes students forget this step, okay? Now, when you take the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, you take the product of this diagonal, a times d minus the product of this diagonal, b times c, and that gives you the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. So let's go ahead and do that. Over here, this diagonal, 1 times negative 3, gives us negative 3 minus the product of this diagonal, 4 times 2 is 8, i. Okay, now for this matrix, same thing. We're going to take this diagonal, a times d, negative 9, minus the product of this diagonal, which is negative 8, j, plus the product of this diagonal, 3 times 2 is 6, minus the product of this diagonal, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, k. Let's go ahead and simplify. Negative 3 minus 8 gives us a negative 11, i. Uh, when you subtract, it's like adding the opposite, so this gives us negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1, times the negative is positive 1, j, plus... 6 minus negative 2, it's like 6 plus positive 2, that's 8k. That's our cross product. And you can also write this in the component form, negative 11, 1, 8. And that's the vector that's going to be perpendicular to both of these two vectors using that right-hand rule that we talked about. Now, if you want to check just to kind of do a little check to see that this indeed is in fact perpendicular to vector u and v, you can do the dot product. And if the dot product is equal to zero, that means that the two vectors are orthogonal 
or perpendicular. So what we do is we take the x's and multiply them together. 3 times negative 11 is negative 33, plus multiply the y's together. 1 times 1 is 1. Multiply the z components together. 4 times 8 is 32. And you can see 33 plus negative 33 is 0. We can do the same thing with vector v. Negative 2 times negative 11 is 22. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. And you can see 24 plus negative 24 is 0. And we can kind of verify that it is indeed orthogonal to both of those original vectors. Let's take a look at another example. Let's see if you can do this one on your own. Go ahead and pause the video. See if you can do number 2 here on your own. We'll go through it together. So if I was going to do this problem, the way I would set it up is like we did the last one. We'd make a matrix, put our standard unit vectors here at up the top, i, j, and k. And then if we're doing u cross v, make sure you put vector u first here on top, negative 3, 5, and 1. Vector v, the second vector on the bottom, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Now what I like to do is I like to kind of set it up first. I like to kind of draw my 2 by 2 matrices. We have i minus, that's the one that students sometimes forget, this middle one's negative, j plus the third matrix, k. And the way we find these uh, two by two matrices is we cross out the row and column that go through I. So here's I, I'm gonna cover those up. That matrix that we're left with, they call this like a minor matrix, it's five, one, negative three, and negative four. Cross out the row and column that go through J, that matrix that we're left with, that minor matrix is negative three, one, negative two, negative four. And then for the last one, we cross out the row and column that go through K and that minor matrix that we're left with is negative 3, 5, negative 2, negative 3. Okay, so now what we do is we take the determinant. Remember the determinant is this product minus this product, AD minus BC. So let's go ahead and do that. We've got negative 20 minus this product, negative 3. So be careful with the signs. It's a AD minus BC. Okay, I minus, take this product, Negative 3 times negative 4 is 12, minus this product. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Got a lot of negatives in this problem. J plus this diagonal, AD, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, minus this diagonal, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, K. Okay, now let's just simplify. When we subtract, it's like adding the opposite. Negative 20 plus 3 is negative 17I. Okay, and then here we have subtractions like adding the opposite. We have 14, so that's going to be a negative 14j. Here are subtractions like adding the opposite. We have a 19k. Or we can write this in component form, x, y, z, right? Negative 17, negative 14, 19. That's our cross product. Now, again, if we want to do a quick check, it should be orthogonal, which means perpendicular to both vector u and vector v. So if we do the dot product, multiply the x's together, negative three times negative 17 is 51, plus multiply the y components together, five times negative 14 is negative 70, plus multiply the z components together, one times 19 is 19, we're getting 70 plus negative 70 is zero. So far so good. Let's multiply vector v times this guy here, x components, negative 2 times negative 17 is positive 34. Multiply the y components together, negative 3 times negative 14 is positive 42. Multiply the z components together, uh, 4 times, or negative 4 times 19 is negative 76. We have 76 plus negative 76 is 0. And we can verify that this vector is indeed orthogonal to both u and v. So great job if you're able to follow this video talking about how to find the cross product of two vectors. If you like the way I explain things and you want to learn more about vectors, I've got a number of uh, vector videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring. I'll put some videos here that you can uh, watch at the end, um, either a playlist or another video re uh, relating to vectors. I'll see you over in that video.